on guys, Jax the Bearded Hiker here at Smokehouse Bayou's International Headquarters. Also home of the best beef jerky on the planet. I'm going to leave a link below where you guys can go get some of this bomb diggity beef jerky if you want it. You guys are going to want to stick around for this video because today we're going to be doing some jalapeno cheddar smokies. So we're going to show you how we do it. All right, so we got about six pounds of eye around here. We got about six pounds of Boston butt, correct? Right, yeah. We're about ready to start slicing this up in uh, smaller pieces so we can fit into the grinder and start grinding this up. And we haven't trimmed any of this eye around or Boston butt. Uh, I would say if you guys are going to be doing this at home, just check, make sure you don't have any hard pieces of fat. Thank yeah, you. I would say, you know, if you're wanting to get a shelf stable product, maybe you trim it on out or whatever. Um, but we're going to leave a little in there for just flavor, man. All right. Sounds good. All right. Brian's going to show us how we slice this up to put in the grinder there. We're just going to get it into smaller cubes where it'll feed in there well. You can just do the pork butt basically the same way, yeah? Mm-hmm. All right. All right. We'll get back with you uh, when all this is sliced up. All right, so what you we got some uh, Bayou dust right here. Uh, you sell that product on your uh, right. on your website too. Yep. Uh, link will be below. You're going to use two and a quarter pounds of the Bayou dust. We're also going to use a half ounce of the pink curing salt here. You can get you can pick this curing salt up at uh, Academy, right? We can. Man. <laughs> Good right. season. So, do you, let me ask you something. If this is a curveball for you, then you just let me know, okay? Mm -hmm. So, we're about ready to put this on there, but I, my question is. Do you think it's a, a difference between seasoning this now before the grind or after the grind? You you, you see any difference? After, uh, in your experience, know, well, does it make a difference? I like to I would season it before and let the grind and do the mixture of it. You know. Okay. I mean, I just don't know if you can go wrong. As soon as you get all the ingredients in there and it's ground and mixed up, I think it'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and season this up. I don't think there's any rhyme or reason about that. Look at that. Boom. Now, if I do this, Jack, and I don't sneeze, it will be a miracle. <laughs> there it goes. Obviously, we're going to have some seasoning that's not going to stick to this meat. And then once we run it through, we'll probably just add that seasoning back into it. But we'll get it all in the meat. And uh, so I'm going to change my gloves. We'll get this grinder down here and start getting to work on this stuff. Hey, Jack. Um, this kind of points out why it doesn't really matter if we put it in there before or after. This is all the, the seasoning that we're going to use that didn't stick to the meat originally, you know. And so as we grind it through, then the next grind will help, we'll work it all in and re-grind it into there. Does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. Okay, let's see what's going to happen here. Hey, look, one thing I want to point out on this particular grinder is we bought an attachment. And basically this, this, is, this part right here is, a, is the attachment. And it's got two of your grinders inside in one. So normally you would grind through a, big, a bigger hole and then you would take it and refeed it through and grind it through a smaller one. Well, this one's got the bigger knife on this side and the smaller or plate, I guess is what you would call it. And uh, and so anyway, uh, it's a real nice attachment that'll save you some time. Now we're gonna run it through twice anyway, simply because we're doing beef and pork. But if we were just grinding up one type of meat, we probably wouldn't have to grind it twice, you know? You start factoring in the seasoning and all that kind of stuff, that might dictate that you're gonna grind it twice. But otherwise, uh, like when I make boudin or something like that and I grind it through here, I don't only have to grind it just one time. So it saves you, saves you a complete additional run when you get that attachment, which I think is worth the money. Totally off topic, but are you going to uh, start selling that boudin? <laughs> because that was some good boudin balls. Yeah, we've been working on uh, all the things we need to do to sell that online. So. If somebody will go to smokehousebayou.com, and that's our webpage, uh, just kind of keep up with that. 
and I'm sure we'll be announcing it on our YouTube channel. But yeah, the, the, we're gonna start shipping boudin balls, man. What, did you like them? They were. I mean, I know I keep saying this, and you know, it's. I keep saying it's the best I've had, but man, I'm, I'm telling you, it's the best boudin ball balls I've ever had. That's awesome. That means a lot to me. Hey, I had to roll up my sleeves for this one. And just get all that seasoning worked back in there and we'll run it through again. Oh. I'm making a mess for you, Miss Shayla. Yeah, that means it's gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was always told. Don't make a mess, it ain't gonna taste good. You just tell me when to stop or I'm, not, I'm doing it wrong. Keep doing it till I get tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a long day. <laughs> we about for, forgot these jalapenos. I'm just cutting these up in the little uh, rounds here. And we got one pound of jalapenos. So that was one pound to 12 pounds of meat. Yep. And we're leaving the seeds in because we like it spicy. All right, so let's drop these jalapenos in there. You're going to mix it for us, right? Sure. All right. Push yeah, go ahead. And I'll let you. Okay. It's my turn to play in the ground beef. Mmm. showing up on camera but those jalapeno pieces you can definitely see them in there yeah so i got a question for you yeah sir. are you willing to uh you know that body dust that we're using as a seasoning here are you willing to give up any secrets on that well i tell you what when uh our chipotle jerky that you uh that we sell that's what we use is body dust so this exact seasoning is how that season so yeah, it's got a good Chipotle flavor to it. So the only thing you're really giving up is Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we should change the name of this to Jalapeno Cheddar Chipotle Smoky. I think that would be more accurate. There you go. Yeah, there you have it. You could call it Jalapeno Cheddar Chipotle Smokies made by two studs from the South <laughs> if you want to get real real uh, accurate you know but that's just up to you right <laughs> I, you know what i can hear people clicking off this video right now as soon as you mention where you the going stud. <laughs> all right so for the those of you who have stuck around this long we're about ready or brian is about ready to give you one of the most valuable tips if you have one of these grinders and you can see it's always tough to get right there in the in those little grooves and stuff the meat out so you're going to give us this tip and this is for free folks show us how it's yeah, going what, what are you going to do brian we're just going to uh put this glove on get this out of the way here but uh you can just run a piece of bread through your grinder like this and it'll help kind of push that stuff out you know? piece of bread all right yep It work its way through, but that's about it. That's probably where we would end that. But it got you quite a bit more meat out. Yep. Hey man, we got it ground up. We got the jalapenos in there. Now we just got to add the two pounds of cheese. All right, let's do it. All right. So we had two pounds of cheese. We had one pound of jalapenos. Six pounds of beef. Six pounds of pork. Yep. And then let's see, a half ounce of the cured pink salt. Yep. And, and about two, two and a quarter, quarter pounds of the, the, and about 185 pounds of good loving right here. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so we're not selling any of this, right? So if any beard hairs get in there, <laughs> yeah, we don't have to worry about any complaints, right? <laughs> All right. After we get it mixed up, we're just gonna get the caser out. And I might have misspoke on one of these segments. For some reason, I said seven to nine millimeter. I meant 17 to 19 millimeter is actually the diameter of the um, of the snack stick casing. The casing, yeah. 17 to 19 millimeter. Yeah. yeah. Did we say we got those casings at? Uh... <laughs> guess drum guess roll, where please. We got them. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a link below. <laughs> 
academy, man. It's the it's the place to get it. It is the place to do it. No, man. but I'm sure people that don't have an academy, if you have Gander Mountain, uh, Cabela's, Bass Pro, Bass Pro Shops, right. yeah, you should be able to find some casings, folks. Yeah. All right, I think that's good. What do you think, Brian? That looks good and uh, worked into me. All right, let's case this stuff up. I do that. All right, so we ready to fill this thing up, I guess, yeah? Yeah, man. I believe, I'm not 100% certain, I think this is a 15 pound capacity uh, hopper. So we should get it all in one, one, uh, one field. Do I even need to ask where you got this uh, hopper from? <laughs> All right, so we're gonna feed that, uh, or he's gonna feed that uh, casing on there. Now that's just a regular collagen casing, yeah? Right, all right. Well, you know what I'm gonna need is a pair of something to cut this with, some scissors or something. Sure. I think so. If you pull that off and tie a knot in it, I'm guessing, yeah? Yeah, sir. All right, right here, you wanna kinda of work it. When you start seeing this come out, mm -hmm. If you tie that knot too quick, it'll give you problems because it'll catch air in it. Okay. Well, he, I know y'all can't see close up, but he just tied a knot in the end of that. And then he's, this is a two person job in my opinion, or it makes it a lot easier. So he's gonna run this out and I'm gonna work it on this tray here. And one thing that's helpful is I've got a foot pedal on this, uh, on this stuffer. So I'm able to control the speed of it. All right, so we're at the back of this smoker out here of the International Headquarters. What right. we gonna be smoking these Smokies on? Well, we talked about it in there. How about we use a mixture of cherry wood and hickory wood? Sounds good to me. Hey, where'd you get that wood at? <laughs> they have it at Academy Sports and Outdoors. Ooh. We're gonna throw it in this five gallon bucket of water and let that soak for about 30 minutes before we put it on the pit. Okay, just before I forget to ask, what do you plan on smoking this? What temperature do you plan on smoking? We're going to smoke it between 160 and 165 for the first two hours. Then we're going to bump it up to about 180 and we'll smoke it there for about another two hours. That's my guesstimation. If we need to bump it up from there, we will. We're going to get that internal temp up to about 145, 150. And uh, we got to try to do that in increments because we wanna, don't want to bust that casing. That's what we're trying to keep from doing. If you go ahead and smoke it at 185, that casing is going to bust. Yeah. All right, there we go. We got 12 pounds of Smokies. All right. Going in the smoker. And they're just going to sit in between the, uh, the little rack runs here. I mean, uh, so they're going to offset each other, or they're going to yeah. not all be uniform. Not some good light, but yeah. See that? All right, we'll see you guys in, uh, I don't know, we'll, I'll, I'm gonna, I'll shoot a little bit in, after the first smoke there, two hours from now. All right, guys, look. We've had it on 158 to 160 for about two hours. And so uh, we're going to open them up and check them. Now when I crack this, there's going to be a lot of smoke, so I'm going to kind of let it sit for a second and let that extractor right. pull that smoke out. You got some pretty mahogany looking colors. Come on in here and get some of that. Look at that. Oof. That is beautiful. We don't have the best light here, but... Trust know. me, it looks good. No, look, we can pull that out. Can <laughs> yeah, you there see? you go. Oh, wow, yeah. That's, that's what's happening there. Now... We're going to let these go for at least another two hours. But man, they're a pretty color. Whew. And uh, something tells me they're going to be real good. I know. <laughs> All right, guys, look, we've, uh, we've had these on the smoker for four hours and about 25 minutes. Yep. 
exactly. Okay. And uh, we started out at 165 and basically kept them there for about three and a half hours. Then we went up to 185 for only about an hour, I guess. Is that right? Three right. Hours, yeah. About, yeah. Maybe a about an hour. hour. So we're going to check the internal temperature. We're looking for 165, right? Anything above it. So we're going to go in the center of this puppy right here. And we are, and we're right there. We're at one, let me get, let's make sure I'm in the center. All right, we're at 167. I don't know if you can see that, Jack. But yep, no, I can see it. So we're hitting internal temps. We'll check it on one more. Yeah, 177. All right, so what we're gonna do, we can we can just roll this car around. Yeah, if that's a good idea. We've got a little ice bath here. We're gonna take them out and just throw them in this bath. We want to cool them down. To get them down around 40 or so, but you're gonna see a change in this casing. It's gonna get a little more firm. And you know how when you eat your snit, uh, stick the Smokies or sticks, they have that pop to it. It's gonna to add to that pop a little bit, that snap, I should say. And then once we get them cooled down, we're gonna cut them to what our desired length is. Oh yeah. Look, man, these have got pretty color on them. Yeah, they do. I think I can get more than one at a time. I can't wait to try them out. All right, so we cooled down. Yeah, these have been cooling down for I guess some of them about 10 minutes. And uh, so we're gonna start, you're gonna start cutting them, and then the best part, let's pull these out we here. We get to sample them. them. What do y'all think? Jack, you want them about like that? Yeah. We reckon? Yeah, sure. Um, but look, if you put these in your refrigerator with the curing salt that we have in them and the length that we smoked them, if you have a vacuum sealer, I mean, if you were gonna have this many for yourself, you can see we're producing quite a bit with that 12 pounds of meat. And I've got this many more to cut up. So there's quite a few here. Uh, but if you vacuum sealed them, you can throw them in your, in your freezer if you like. Um, and then the ones you kept in your refrigerator, man, you, you would get weeks of shelf time on this, you know? So as far as like hikers and people that want portable protein and that kind of thing, great option, you know? Yeah. All right, so Brian's finished cutting up, and that is a stack. That is a stack of Smokies right there. Can we try this out now? It's time for a taste test. All right, let's do this. All right, so you're going to let me try it first? Yeah, buddy. All right. Wow, that really did stiffen these things up. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of little snap to it. Mmm. Try while you're trying. That's good. Tell us what you're tasting. What, what do mm. you, what flavors are you tasting? Is what I mean. I'm getting the spice from the jalapeno. Can't really distinguish the jalapeno like in a specific sense. The cool thing is, it's got the Bayou dust has a sweet heat component. Mm -hmm. That's the whole flavor profile that we go for, you know. Mm. And so you can taste that sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, and then here comes the chipotle. Chipotle, you just smoke in the right. smoke. And I guess the cheese, I mean, kind of it kind of mellows it out a little bit as far as like the, the texture. Mm -hmm. But man, that little snap. I mean, the thing about it is when I eat this, I just want another bite. You know, that's... I know, I think. You know what I'm, I'm sitting here, what? <laughs> We're trying to get you to say something. Okay, like, sorry. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. so it's one of those tastes. So, I tasted the bayou dust like you a minute ago. Well... An hour or so ago on its own mm -hmm. so I'm definitely I'm kind of amazed that the Bayou dust flavored that whole thing without you putting anything else in there so mm -hmm. whatever you whatever your secret is to the Bayou dust I works. would love I, I'll be honest with you I think you could ramp up the uh, jalapeno for my taste I love spicy so you could work with that at home if you mm -hmm. <laughs> we, used a pound. A we used a pound <laughs> A pound of jalapenos to 12 pounds of Yeah, and if you're meat. a spicy lover, man, you might you might ramp that up. You know, you might could put, put put a little bit more jalapeno in it. And I can see the cheese in there. Oh, yeah. Delicious. Look, if you make these at home, get ready to hide them. 
because they will grow legs and disappear. You leave that sitting around. Bird yeah. gets out, you got that. This, this this is better than any beef stick I've ever had. Right. I mean, you know, and you can tell like this is like legit homemade mm -hmm. deal as far as the other. Man, let me ask you this. Okay, that's twelve pounds. We hadn't we hadn't weighed what we have left. I don't know exactly what this is. We could figure that out, but and maybe we can put it in the description below. But um, if you had a stack of that sitting at your house. Man, that's meal replacement right there. It I is. mean, if somebody wants, this January, they're trying to lose weight, this and that and the other, something like that is a great meal replacement. Yeah. You know, you can take it to work with a bag of almonds. That'll get you through the day, mm -hmm. you know. All right, guys, you want to take this home for me? Look. Not take this home, but yeah. hey. Did y'all hear that? Video. He said, did you want no, to take, take this home? Take this video home. <laughs> All right, guys. Smokies. Homemade. Do it. I see. I thought I was going to do the do it. All right. You do it. All right. You do take it. Home. Okay. Here we go. Let's redo this. All right. Smokies at home. Homemade now. Do it.